गुड मॉर्निंग बंदे गुड मॉर्निंग ओके सर्वन सर नहीं बंदे कैन स्टार्ट नाउ ओके गुड मॉर्निंग बंदे गुड मॉर्निंग बंदे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग तीन शाकरण तीन लोग हैं शाकरण तीन लोग स्लाइड्स बनाओ गुड मॉर्निंग बंदे तीन सर नाइ Oh, okay. All right. Today, uh, we are going to discuss a new uh, sutra called Thana Sutra. Thana Sutra. Thana means uh, themes. Both the talk about talk on seven themes. Uh, these seven themes are uh, very uh, popular. Many people know these seven themes, but I'm going to uh, talk a little more in detail. Uh, Buddha said. Because there are five themes that should be often uh, reflected, should be often reflected by men, women, monastics, and lay persons. That means these are the four segments of society, according to the Buddhas. instruction and they are supposed to reflect on this five themes very often day and night what are the five themes a man or woman household or gone for should often be often reflect thus i am subject to all this i am not exempt from that from all this i am subject to all this and i am not exempt from that number 2 i am subject to illness and i am not exempt from that i am subject to death I am not exempt from that. I am subject to. Uh, I am. I must be uh, parted and separated from everyone and everything. Number five. I am the owner of my karma. Yeah, of my karma, I have karma as my origin, karma as my relative, karma as my resort. Okay. Uh, karma se gomi, karma daaya do, karma yoni, karma bandu. Come up, please, sir. Row. Young come on, please. And I have come on, come on. And I will be the heir of whatever come, good or bad, that I do. And uh, so, and Buddha said, this these five teams. 
factual, real, you know, nobody can say otherwise, nobody can talk against it uh, if they are in, if they are in uh, steady mind. Of course, if somebody is, uh, has very mental problem, only such person can speak against this. So only such person can say, I will not uh, grow old, I will not sick, get sick, I will not uh, uh, die, I will not separate from loved ones, I have no karma. I think these days, these days, occasionally some people say, I just don't believe in karma. It is humbug. Some people say. But even they say that because of their karma. They have committed very bad, bad, bad karma and therefore they don't have right mind, right intention, straight mind. Therefore they say all kind of things and uh, and that also is their karma. And Buddha said, uh, number one, why somebody uh, reflect, I am uh, subject to old age, not exempt from old age? Because in their youth, uh, youth, they are intoxicated with their youth. When they are intoxicated with their youth, they engage in misconduct by body, speech, and mind. Uh, they are young, and youthfulness is uh, an intoxication. Yobbana mother in Pali. Yobbana mother. I think you also have heard this, and probably you might have felt it like that when you were very young. You can do anything, you have strength, you have uh, stamina, you can run around, play games, and take energies, go to Olympics, and so forth and so on. All kinds of things you can do, and you can win many awards uh, in contest and so forth. Then you become very, very proud of yourself. And then I remember people say uh, after games they raise their lift their hands in the sky and say, I am the strongest person in the world. <laughs> They say that. Uh, so, and they think that way. So, and when they are intoxicated like that, they commit wrong things. They can kill, they can steal, they can commit sexual misconduct, they can lie, they can drink, they can uh, do all kind of crimes and become uh, thugs and criminals and so forth, because they are young. And therefore, they, they, they deny old age. Okay. Number two, uh, I am, uh, I, when they have when they are young and they say, I'm, 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 if they don't think I'm subject to illness, I'm not exempt from illness, in, in a state of health, there are uh, beings in healthy state, they are intoxicated with their health, and when they are intoxicated in, with their health, they also commit all kind of mischievous things by body, speech, and mind. 
you know, they are healthy. Of course, people, many people are healthy at certain stage of life. And when they see other people fall sick, go to hospital, take medicine, and they have to take medicine every day, and they have heart attack, stroke, uh, kidney stone, and so forth and so on, all kinds of sicknesses. Then they think, I am not going to sick, going to fall sick. I am strong. And with that intoxication, the same like other intoxication in Surah Mere Majja Pamadatana, in this uh, uh, mother is intoxication. And, the num and number three, if the person, uh, if the person reflects, I am subject to death, I am not exempt from death, during their uh, life, uh, when they are intoxicated with long life, longevity, Look at me, I live so long and uh, I can continue like that. I'm so, I live so many years now, I can continue, I will not die. And therefore they are intoxicated with that and then commit all kind of wrong things with body, speech and mind. Number four. If they think if I am reason why they should think uh, I must be parted and separated from my loved ones, everything dear to me, everything agreeable. I have so many friends, so many relatives, so many bodies. They all are, I like them, all of, all of them I like, and I have protection from them, and uh, I will stay here for all my life. But they are going against the truth. Uh, the, that person, in reality, cannot have protection from them. Either they die or you die. Or they separate from you or you separate from you. It is inevitable. It happens in life. It happens billions of billions of times, always, every day in society. You know, you have many good friends. They pass away one by you, one by you, one by you. And one day you fall sick and you are going to pass away. And but if you think that you can live with your fallen, then you are intoxicated with that longevity, long life, and committed all kind of misuse, misbehave, in a mis misbehave, misbehave, have misconduct in by body, speech, and mind. So you can avoid this if you reflect on the fourth, that is that I will die, I will separate from my love charge. And the last one is number five. If somebody, man, woman, monk, nun, uh, anybody, uh, becoming a monk is not immunity from all these things. I am the owner of my come, heir of my come. I have come as my origin, come as my relative, come as my resource. I will be the heir of whatever come I committed, good or bad. I will be the heir to that. When one thinks of that thing that way, one would be afraid of committing unwholesome things by body, speech, and or mind. 
somebody who doesn't believe in that can do anything without any shame or fear. They can do anything. People don't believe in uh, uh, karma. Uh, they say this is uh, something that uh, existed, uh, some kind of superstition existed in society. Buddha just borrowed it and uh, taught us. They think that way. And uh, they don't understand the reality and they commit all sorts of things. However, however, this is the best part of this, uh, so this course. This noble disciple reflects thus, I am not only one who is subject to old age, not action from old age, all beings that come and go, that come and go, that pass away, undergo rebirth, are subject to old age, and uh, none are exempt from old age. Okay. When one thinks, not only I, others also grow old. I grew old, others also grow old. There is no difference between me and them. We all grow old. And um, they all came to this world and they all go out of this world. They, this life is a temporary residence. We borrowed it. And when, uh, when our uh, what you call tenure is over, we have to go. Nobody can stop it. And I am subject to that. They also are subject to it. You know, the one does not think of oneself. One think of universal nature. Universal nature. And then we die, take rebirth according to our karma. I die and take rebirth according to my karma. And therefore, when they think I get old and no nobody is exempt, then he can, when they reflect upon this, then that particular individual, say he is one person who is a, a monk or nun, or a woman or a man, whoever, consider this, that is his path. That is his path. That is the way he thinks. That is called, he pursues this path, develops it, cultivates it. He thinks of, very often Buddha said, reflect often, I say often, day and night. He thinks this way, that I am getting old, I am subject to old age, all living beings are getting old, they all are subject to old age. When we, when the person think in this way and continue this way, that is a meditation. Meditation on getting old, old age, impermanence of youth. And then as he keeps things, cultivate this, that is become, he, he develops it, cultivate it, and Buddha said, as he, as he does so, the fetters are entirely abandoned. What are the fetters? There are ten fetters. When ten fetters are there, you know ten fetters. The sensual desire, doubt, uh, then notion of existence of self, sakkaditi vichikicca, 
then believing rituals, thinking that it will bring us enlightenment. Srila uh, Prasparna was a Kama Raga Vyapa, the Kama Raga is sensual lust, Vyapa is hatred or anger. Now five, these are called lower fetters, lower fetters, heavy fetters, down to earth fetters. And there are five more which are called high fetters, subtle fetters. Rupara, Garupara, Gamana, Uddhata, Vidya. These are for uh, fine material existence. These are for non material existence. Then, Mana conceit, Uddhata, remorse, restlessness, and Avidya, ignorance. These are called ten fetters. When one reflects on one of these five, one of these five, first one, reflect on the fact that I'm subject to old age, I'm not exempt from old age. All other beings are subject to old age. None of them is exempt from old age. That is his dream, that is his meditation. When he meditates on this, he doesn't, he abstains from doing all kind of wrong things by body, speech and mind. And then he developed this as he develops it, he destroys all these ten fetters. When you destroy all the ten fetters, what happened to you? You attained arahantud. You became enlightened. And then, abandon all underlying tendencies. Anusaya. They are called anusaya. There are seven anusayas. What are they? Uh, obsession of sexual pressure. Raga anusaya. Raga anusaya. Anusaya means underlying tendency. Anu, accordingly, saya, sleep. Sleep with all other fine defilements. And then, Obsession or resist, resistance, resentment, that is called Patigha Anusaya, Patigha. And number three, obsession of wrong view, Ditta Anusaya, Ditta Anusaya. And obsession with uh, obsession of uncertainty, Pichigitya Anusaya. And the obsession of conceit, mana anusaya. Remember, we mentioned you have uh, mana, youthfulness, health, longevity. From all these things, you will develop mana when you understand it as it is. Then mana will disappear, mana anusaya also. Then Obsession of uh, the obsession of a passion for becoming uh, Bhavaraga Anusaya. Bhavaraga, we call Bhava, Rupa Bhava, Arupa Bhava. Uh, three Bhavas. And Kama Bhava, Vipaka Bhava, and so forth. There are categories of becoming, becoming. And obsession of ignorance, last one. Avijja. These are all called underlying tendencies. When one reflects on this, on one of these five, Buddha mentioned number one, that is getting old. That becomes his subject of meditation. Getting, practicing, thinking, reflecting, Day and night, always practicing, that is practicing meditation. Friends, I want to add another note. When we mention these things, many, many, many uh, unenlightened, ordinary, 
uh, ignorant folk think this Buddha always talked about pessimism, bad things, wrong things, unpleasant things. No. Buddha spoke on the truth, noble truth, not ordinary truth, noble truth. All these are inevitable truth and therefore don't you ever think that Buddha spoke of unpleasantness, pessimistic things, unpalatable things. Buddha spoke from the truth. Sometimes, of course, people don't like to hear the truth. That is their problem. Truth is bitter for them. What can one do? What can Buddha do? When you are sick, you sometimes doctors prescribe you certain medicine which is very, very bitter. When you had pneumonia, what you call malaria, when you have malaria, they prescribe uh, what you call medicine called quinine, which is very, very, very bitter. But you have to drink. If you want to get cure, even you don't like it, drink it. So, if you want to liberate yourself, even though this happens to be unpleasant to you, only for the beginning, only for the beginning, when you keep practicing, unpleasant becomes pleasant. Very beautiful. Anyway, the same thing happens when you reflect on the second truth, second thing. Uh, I am subject to illness. I am subject to illness, not only me, all living beings are subject to illness. No one is exempt from that. Temporarily you may be healthy, but uh, that is the second thing. Third is also, I am uh, I'm subject to death. Not only I, all living beings die. Whoever came to this world, who they pass away, they die. And then, number four, uh, I be, I separate from my loved ones, loved things, my place, my position, my house, my expensive, beautiful, attractive vehicle and my wife, my children. All these are my, 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 my. We have to separate, leave them behind. Let them take their turn. I take my turn, <laughs> they will take their turn because it is common. This happens to everybody. We don't wish them to follow us immediately. Let them live as long as they like. Let them be healthy as they are. Uh, but uh, I have to leave them, I have to take leave from them, I must say goodbye to them, and therefore, until then, then they also will do. Last is, after all these things, I will, be, uh, I will live according to my karma. As I mentioned, mm, and then, therefore, if one take practice this one of these five, one of these five, one can attain enlightenment. If you can attain enlightenment by practicing one, how quickly can you attain enlightenment by practicing the four, five? You see, when you practice first one, you attain enlightenment. When you practice second, you attain enlightenment quicker. When you practice the third, you practice attain enlightenment fastest. And on the other two things, super fast. You see? And therefore, friends, uh, I think this is a very beautiful uh, discourse. We keep this mind in mind and we try to practice. I want to end this uh, talk now and I like you all to meditate. I 
of course, I started a little late because I, I had some difficulties in logging in. And so, uh, anyway, uh, by the way, we have uh, you treat it started today. And so I had to conclude this token, get to meditate. Okay. Many merits to you, Bante. Irwan Saramai. Irwan Saramai. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so to her soul living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate all the world, a heart of boundless living friendliness, Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us meditate. And I stop talking uh, to save time. Uh, so we can meditate at least for another 25 minutes.
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends, this is the end of our today's session. Uh, we see you tomorrow at the same time mm -hmm. and with your questions. And let me conclude this with my regular metta wish. You have heard this many times, but it is not uh, uh, inappropriate to have this metta thought again and again. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases recover very soon, return to their normal life, regular activities, practice meditation, and liberate from themselves from suffering. The doctors, nurses, hospital staffs who are taking care of these people out of compassion, May they also find time to practice Dhamma, practice meditation, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who are grieving over the death of their loved ones, as I mentioned in my talk, we all are subject to that. And however, when somebody departed from us, we think that it is unique, that happens only to us. No, friends, that is a universal truth, mm -hmm. as Buddha mentioned. And think of that, practice Dhamma, practice meditation, practice those five things I mentioned. Each of them is powerful enough, strong enough, clear enough, for us to attain liberation, overcoming ten fetters and seven minor uh, influxes. May you attain Nibbana. Thank you. And, and all May you be blessed, Bhante. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Okay. Long and healthy to serve more to the world. Thank you, Bhante. Okay. Long life, good health. It went that way, Bhante. It went that way, all. Well, I'm sitting in Rogi, so the way you are. Nirvana bodhi thought that it is not Ah, boom, 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 bo